Energy storage is an important factor in any off-grid installation. Inverters for off-grid situations normally operate at lower power ranges when compared to inverters for grid-connected facilities. This is because they cannot simply inject their power into an existing grid. They have to create their own stable grid for consumption. Some manufacturers offer the possibility to connect several inverters in parallel or series, as we can see in the table at the bottom of this slide. Some manufacturers prepare their inverters for auxiliary inputs in parallel in order to create hybrid systems that include diesel or perhaps wind ge generators. This slide includes some of the offerings from the main manufacturers of this kind of inverter, Zantex, Victron and Ingeteam. If you check the values in this table, you will see that the power per unit is extremely low, from 6 kilowatts to 15 kilovolt amps. But the system power is a little higher because it's possible to connect several inverters. With Zantex, it can be six inverters in parallel or series. With Victron, 10 inverters. Or with Ingeteam, eight inverters. The system can provide a three-phase signal of 36 kilowatts for Zantex, 100 kilovolt amps for Victron, and 120 kilovolt amps for Ingeteam. Most of these inverters come with a battery charger and other tools. For example, the Xantrex allows the injection of surplus generation into the grid or different configuration modes to manage generation and consumption. Where there is a regular uh, regulator in an off-grid installation, its main purpose is to charge the batteries. It's important in this situation to differentiate between regulators and chargers. A charger is only used to charge the batteries. It's not used to regulate or stabilize the signal, but a regulator is used both for charging and to produce a stable signal for use by DC devices. Regulators both protect the batteries against overcharging and prevent an excessive discharge from the battery cycle. And to protect the regulator and batteries, it's recommended to work with an oversizing of 125%. Chargers are not simple devices. Occasionally one sees proposals for PV installations without regulators because the panels already generate DC current and the batteries need this type of current. But a battery charge is dependent on a range of factories. Factors. These types of device have algorithms that optimise battery charging to increase the life of the batteries, and it's very important to use them in a PV project. The batteries are used to store energy that is generated during the day to be consumed during times when there is so solar radiation, when solar radiation is low or it's non-existent. A battery is composed of several cells, normally two volts each, connected in series to compose a whole battery of 12 to 48 volts. 12, 24 and 48 volt batteries are common. Or one can buy 2 volt cells and connect them in parallel or in series. Normally the battery system is designed for several days of storage in order to protect against the sustained period of low radiation. There can be several cloudy or rainy days in a row. Three days battery coverage is a good recommendation depending on the location and the cost of the PV pro project. Alternatively, a diesel generator can be included as a backup. Here are some of the considerations when designing an off-grid facility. First, the battery capacity. Battery capacity is defined as the electricity that can be obtained during the full discharge of a fully charged battery. The capacity in number of hours is the current that the battery can supply multiplied by the number of hours that it can deliver that current, referred to a certain voltage. For example, a battery of 200 amp hours and 12 volts could theoretically store 2,400 kilowatt hours. Taking account of battery and system losses, an, estimated, an estimate of the real storage would be around 1,900 kilowatt hours. But there are other considerations to take into account in estimating real capacity. One of the most important is the cycle of charge and discharge of the battery. For example, a battery which specifies a capacity of 100 amp hours during 8 hours, C8, might supply 12.5 amps during 8 hours. C is equal to 12.5 times 8 is equal to 100 amp hours. But it might produce 5.8 amps during 20 hours. 
C is equal to 5.8 times 20 is equal to 116 amp hours. Normally it's good practice to consider discharging a battery for a longer period than is specified in the data sheet. Uh, in that way you get more energy from the battery than is specified. In buying a battery the important measure is the number of hours for that capacity. For example, the capacity of a battery on the specifications sheet will say C8, C20, C100, referring to the amount of hours they take into account to deliver the stated capacity. Another important point to consider is the depth of charge. That is the percentage of the total capacity of the battery that can be used without the need for recharge and without damaging the battery. As a general rule, the less depth of charge discharge that is reached on every recycle, the longer the battery's lifetime. This consideration depends on the type of battery. But as an example, if a battery's average discharge rate is 10%, it will last double the years of a battery with an average discharge rate of 20%. This is a factor to be considered during the design stage of the PV plant. A lower depth of charge means more batteries and therefore an increase in the cost of the facility. A balance has to be achieved between the number of batteries and the depth of discharge. When considering depth of discharge, Batteries can be put into two groups, light cycle and deep cycle. Light cycle batteries have less depth of discharge than deep cycle. For light cycle, a depth of discharge of around 20% is common, while for deep cycle it can be 80%. The point is that light cycle batteries are prepared for constant charge and discharge, where deep cycle batteries are more robust and have a higher energy density. You can get a lot more information on this from the battery manufacturers such as those listed at the end of this slide. There are several types of battery in the market, but for PV applications the most suitable are the stationary ones. These types of batteries are designed for a fixed emplacement where consumption is more or less irregular. Many PV applications use batteries designed for deep cycles of discharge, but those sorts of batteries can't provide very high current in a short period of time. Here's a table of the main types of battery normally used for PV. We have added the light cycle lead acid batteries for comparison, but deep cycle lead acid are common. There are also dual cell batteries or more recent designs called nickel cadmium. The nickel cadmium batteries can offer up to 100% depth of discharge, but the lead acid battery also has quite a high depth of discharge, getting up to 80%. Dual cell batteries need less maintenance and be, can be operated in any position, so they're often used for mobile applications such as temporary traffic lights or for street lighting, but they are much more expensive than lead acid. So a normal commercial application, um, lead acid is more typical. Using a diesel generator for backup can reduce the number of solar panels and batteries needed to cope with periods of reduced sunlight or extraordinary consumption. In many parts of the world, the energy generated by diesel can be more expensive than PV system energy. Therefore, increasingly, diesel is only used for extraordinary consumption. A common aim is to cover basic demand with a PV system using diesel for consumption peaks however, then, when there are several days without sunlight. The price of diesel is often the deciding factor on how a diesel backup should be used. Here is a comparison of the price of diesel and solar energy at one Spanish facility in 2010. Please note that the information in the slide assumes 1,500 hours of radiation at peak levels in a year and a diesel price of 35 euro cents based on a diesel price of 1 euro per litre. Diesel prices are notoriously erratic, so this must be checked. The price of a hybrid system is much lower than diesel generation alone over the 25 years. We have to consider the initial investment in the PV facility and the energy it will produce over 25 years. The rise in the blue curve in the 12th year is a reflection of the need for further investment in the PV facility after 10 years as items need replacement. 